Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all doing great today. In this video, it's more of a follow-up to some videos I did a few months ago. The videos I did a few months ago were a little bit more along the free-to-play side, um, just typical average player. Most players will have duplicates of these champions if you've played a while. That was the videos I did a while back. Now today, I wanna talk about some champions who maybe you've gotten really lucky, or maybe you even thought you weren't so lucky, and you pulled duplicates of these champions, or maybe you've, maybe you've swiped your credit card a few more times than the next person, and you have some duplicates of these champions, but, you're just letting them chill in your vault, okay? So maybe you have one copy of them built up, but the other copy is just chilling in your vault down here. These are some legendaries that I have dupes up. Now, these ones I haven't built, and I'm not going to recommend you guys build them either necessarily because I'm not going to recommend you do something that I haven't done per se. Now, some of these champions on this list I don't have, unfortunately, but one of them in particular, if I see an account that doesn't have both of these champions built up, I'm going to be upset. I'm probably personally going to be hurt, <laughs> but you'll, you'll see the champion when I get there. Some of you guys may already guess the champion who it's going to be before I even say it. Now, before we get into the video, I do want to run a, run an idea across you guys and see what you all think about it. So what I want you to do, if you're interested in this idea is leave the name of two different champions down in the comment section below. I'm going to compile all the different champions and put them into a random name selector. And then I'm going to pull two champions out from that random name selector. What I'm going to do with that is either build an arena team or a dungeon team using those two champions. So if you would rather see me build a dungeon team, then do say, for example, say Arbiter and Siffy and Dungeon. Okay, so I'll know Arbiter and Siffy are going to the pool and then Dungeon is the one that's being voted for versus Dungeon versus Arena. Um, if you wanna see Arena, do Arbiter, Siffy, Arena. So I'm gonna tally up all the Dungeons and all the Arenas, and then I'll pick whichever one's doing the best, has the most votes. And then for the random champion selector, I'll just take those two champions, we'll take all the champions, throw them in a pool, be randomly selected. And then I'll do a video on kind of building out teams. If it's an arena, I'm gonna try to push up into plat, try to be somewhat competitive, maybe in plat during the week, not during plat reset. And then for dungeons, I'll try to do as far in dungeons as I possibly can with those two champions in the team and actually make it make sense around those champions. Maybe something fun, maybe something creative. We'll see how it goes. But today, let's talk about 10 champions who are maybe a little bit less free to play, a little bit more credit card swiping, or we'll just call it lucky. So the first one I want to talk about is Arbiter. So you see right here, I already have two Arbiters built. Now, whenever I first pulled Arbiter, I was actually excited because I knew that I could build two of them and actually use two of them. If you don't already know, basically everybody can get Arbiter for free, right? I mean, the missions aren't super hard to complete. These next ones are super hard or super annoying to say the least. Um, but Arbiter, she's available in shards, available for the mission. So the likelihood of getting two of her is already jumped up because you're getting one for free guaranteed, right? Same thing with Visix. A ton of people have du duplicates of Visix. Now with Arbiter, obviously you can build the first one with speed. That's how I have mine built, 358 speed, which is not that fast, but that's how I have her built. The second one, you can do several different things with her. You could build her to be speed tuned with the first Arbiter. So then you have a speed booster into another speed booster with a very nice speed aura. And then the rest of your team can be speed tuned very easily. I've seen this done by a lot of people, a good increased attack buff there as well. You could build the second Arbiter with swift parry gear, um, throw her in a potential arena defense because Arbiter's base HP, if nothing else, is actually pretty decent. Okay. So she has 21,000 base HP. Compare that to a champion like Siffy, also 21,000 base HP, more or less. The defense of Arbiter is not even that bad either. Good base speed. So on, to be honest, she works decent in some defensive type arena teams. Now, she doesn't have a ton of utility as far as being on defense other than this res. So that may or may not be the best idea, but you can throw some accuracy on her, get a few extra, a little bit extra utility from her kit, but it's definitely worth it to build a second Arbiter just to try her out because you'll probably use her. And if anything, you may even use her in regular PVE content like dungeons and things like that because you may not want a super fast Arbiter running in maybe your Fire Knight team because you want to speed tune that team a little differently. So I think Arbiter is definitely one of the champions who is very well worth investing in a duplicate of, especially Void Champion. I mean, Void Champions, if I pull a duplicate of them, I really want to try to build both of them because you don't get very many Void Legendaries, right? I mean, they're harder to come by, especially if you're a lower spender. Now, the second champion I want to talk about I actually got inspiration from I am Steeman's YouTube. He pushes with these two champions sometimes. Let me see where his video was. I know he does um, double Shamel. Okay, so got, you check this out if you want. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to his channel down below in the comments and probably the description as well. But double Shamel actually is a pretty cool team and actually a pretty cool champion to use. Now, I haven't built a team that works perfectly with him and there is a little bit of setup that is involved with this champion, but Duchess, sets up Shamel perfectly, okay? So 
with his A2, attacks one enemy three times, will ignore 25% of the target's defense, will ignore a 25%, a further 25% of the target's defense for each buff on this champion. Places True Fear debuff on all enemies for one turn. So Duchess is going to give him some buffs. He's going to ignore a lot of the target's defense. And then you're going to be good to go with his champion. If you have two of them, especially with Kaimar. Kaimar, Duchess, Double Shamel, I believe is the team that he was running. And that's a team I was testing out for a while as well. And I liked it. Um, Kaimar sleeps. Duchess buffs up. Whichever order doesn't really matter. And then Shamel nukes down whatever tank it is. And then the next Shamel does it. And then they repeat. It's a very cool team, very nice team, especially a good tank destroyer. It's kind of like a almost free-to-play version of like Siffy Double Rodos. Basically, you have two very hard-hitting champions being two Shamels, and you just build around them, and it actually works very well. So having two Shamels, now they may not have a ton of use outside of that. They do have some use in the Doom Tower with Dark Fae because they will remove those fears from your team once the Dark Fae places those fears on your champions, and that does work. So maybe you guys can find some use there as well. But as far as like if you need a champion to take to 60, Shamel is a good champion to build two of because you can definitely use two of them in your arena team. Now, granted, like I said, you do need the other champions to build around him, but it is a pretty cool and usable, as you can see from I Am Steven's YouTube channel, pretty usable champions combination get going there all right now the third champion i think i did this champion i talked about her in the previous video and you can probably see which champion that is by looking at my screen right now it's probably the chick that i have three of and that is madam saris so madam saris is an awesome champion good base hp pretty good base defense especially for an epic void champion whose role is not really to be survivable but she actually can be very very tanky now when i'm building her the first one i have built is i believe for my soulless speed tune team so she's 198, which is speed tune pretty close to Solus. My second one, she's 206. Now this is the one I typically ran faster. So she used to be like 230, 240 speed, and she'd be run with my speed nuker because I don't want this champion, this Madam Saris, running with my speed nuker because she'd be too slow if I have a champion built to be over 200 speed. So having two Madams, a very solid investment for sure. And honestly, with 3v3, having three Madams is actually pretty good as well. Now this one I haven't tested. I'm still going to play around with her build, see if I like it, but I want to fine tune this, but I think three madams can actually work as well. Now this one, you can see she's built in Swift Parry, reaction gear in the bottom. Honestly, don't take this build as like something you should do because this build was literally on her just to test a few things out. And since I had two dark elf reaction pieces of gear, I was like, Hey, might as well try it on Madam Saris and see how it works out. And this banner is definitely not a good banner for her, especially if this was accuracy or resistance that could have been a lot better but i'm definitely going to give her a shot see how she works maybe i like her maybe i don't maybe i just don't even worry about this third one but to be honest like if you're if you don't have a good strip champion like a kaimar a sathalia or anything like that to substitute in for one of your 3v3 teams i can see a situation easily using three madam saris for your 3v3 now obviously not in the same team right so you use team one madam saris in their team two team three madam saris in each of those as well so she's a very good champion to invest in Potentially three of, definitely two of for 99% of accounts out there, but definitely a champion who I do like a lot, who I've invested into quite a bit as well. Now, these next two champions may be obvious for some of you guys, and maybe not. The first one I'm going to talk about is Necrit. So Necrit is a champion who, if I had two of, I would instantly build two of them. So Shield Set is amazing on him, okay, because he has such good base HP. Well, actually, he has the same base HP as Siffy, but... As a champion himself, you don't really need a ton of other stuff for him because his goal is to bring buffs for your other champions and the shield anyway. So if you have him in a shield set, it works perfect. He's bringing shield for your entire team and then he's bringing those buffs for the other champion that he actually places the buffs on. So it's a very good combination and it makes a lot of sense. But if you had two of them, you could maybe put the other one in swift parry. You can maybe build the other one high resist. You could definitely play around with some other builds. Now this is going to be very heavily used, more so like for the arena. So if you don't plan on using your Necrit for the arena, it may not be worth it for you to build two of them. And you'll kind of find that's a similar situation with all these champions. If you don't plan to have one for PvE and one for arena, you may not even need to build two of them, right? So most time, if you're only using them for one area of the game, you really only need one of that champion. But Necrit is a champion who I would definitely build two of if I had two of him. I'd build one probably in a shield set. And the second, second one, I'd probably either put in like um, maybe Relentless, maybe Swift Parry, but I would definitely play around with that set quite a bit more and try a different build for Necrit because he has such a good skill kit. I'm not going to go over all these champion skill kits, but the way his kit works, very, very nice. This A1 that can't be resisted with a decreased attack 
very, very nice ability. And hey, maybe I'd like to get more use of that by making them faster and some different gear if I had a second one. But unfortunately, I don't have a second one. Same thing with this champion right here. I only have one of. Now, this champion, if I had two of her, I would take one of them, build them in speed gear, and the other one I would use for defense. She's an amazing champion on offense as a speed booster, um, given the block debuffs, increased speed, very good base speed. Overall, very good base stats in general, but she's so good on offense and she's so good on defense. So it's like, where do you use her? So if you come up on a 10x Siffy, you're going to see a lot of people pulling for Siffy, like the one we had a few weeks ago, right? So people are definitely going to pull for two of her. I didn't pull for two of her because I'm waiting for the last champion that's on this list. And I'm going to go as hard as I can to actually get that champion. Hence the reason why I have 96 shards and I don't plan on spending a single one of them until said champion, which I'll talk about later on, comes for a 10x, which could be two weeks from now or could be a year from now. But I'm hoping it's not a year from now because I'll have too many Void shards or maybe not even be playing. Who knows? Maybe I'll just quit. You're not going to do a 10x for this champion? I guess I'm done. Just kidding. I don't plan on quitting raid anytime soon whatsoever. But Siffy, definitely a champion worth investing two of. Actually, I did an account takeover um, two weeks ago on stream for somebody's 3v3 and one of his Siffy's was built up. The other one was taking a 60 but wasn't built whatsoever. And I literally threw her in like a mis mismatched piece of gear set. Like she wasn't anything particular, but she did really good. Um, she literally played the perfect role for the team. I don't think we were using her resistance aura, but she was literally a perfect slot in for the team we were using, okay? So Siffy, another champion, definitely invest in two of. Very good for the arena. Very good for if you want to use one of them for maybe, maybe Doom Tower runs and you have to have her speed tuned specifically and you don't want her to be like the fastest champion. I've definitely ran into that issue several times where my Siffy is actually too fast. The one I used as a speed booster in the arena. Um, so when I had her in my Arbiter gear, she was actually too fast to work in my Doom Tower team. So having a second one, obviously I could switch the gear back and forth, but having a second one would have made that a lot easier, especially her build now uh actually it still wouldn't work honestly she would need to be like 240 speed to to go after to go in the correct order that i want her to go in but the next champion i want to talk about is kaimar so kaimar there's a few different builds obviously you can make him fast and set the ai to not use his reset the first turn now that we have the ai resets works perfectly fine you can also build him slow have the reset to work his first turn or you could build him well, this build right here, when I'm mentioning those, is having high accuracy, high speed, but you can also build him with high resistance because so many warlords in the arena right now, if you build your Kaimar with high resistance, you're going to resist the Hegemon anyways, the Hegemon's lockout, so you don't have to worry about that too much, but you're also going, and probably more importantly, going to resist warlords lockout for your team, which means once Kaimar gets his turn, he's going to reset the rest of your team's cooldowns, allowing you to actually do stuff against the warlord team. And ideally, the warlord team is not going to be super tanky. And if they are, you probably shouldn't have hit them anyways if your team can't get through that. But once you reset all your allies cooldowns, you should be pretty good to go ahead and just knock right through that warlord team. But Kaimar is definitely a champion worth investing. Heck, I'd even do three of them. If I had three Kaimars, I would build one fast and high accuracy. I would probably build a second one to be speed to in specific dungeon content, specific Doom Tower team runs, team compositions. And the third one would be a super high resistance one, probably even immunity gear if I had it, or the arena. Very, very good champion. And it's so cool that, I mean, he doesn't require a ton of books. He's an OG champion and he's super, super useful. So definitely a champion who is worth investing multiples into for sure now the next champion is more to macabre so you guys may have seen some videos from boomer also check out his channel if you haven't already 69 boomer i'll also link him down below as well but he was doing some triple more to builds as well but double more to triple more to i don't know about quad more to that might not work but uh if you have two definitely invest in him i know fohawk from my stream actually messaged me a few days ago he attacked actually we can go ahead and show you that maybe i don't know if the attack's still on my list or not but he attacked my, no, it is not. But he attacked my defense with double Mortu Macabre, and it worked pretty well for him. He said he's having a ton of fun with it. Basically, how Mortu works is you take him against Warlord, take him against Prince Kaimar, take him against anybody who does like an AoE ability, and he's going to proc his Peril. You guys probably know what Peril is because if you've ever ran the campaign, Chapter 12, Stage 7 on Nightmare is in most people's nightmare at this point, to be honest. Like, probably go to bed dreaming or having nightmares of this stage because of how annoying this guy is right at the end, okay? So this is what happens. Peril is set to proc, I think, let's see, I want to say 20% of the time, unless you're fighting him in the campaign, 
which is 100% of the time, right? Has a 20% chance to unlock a secret skill peril for one turn when attacked. Also 20% chance to fill in his champion's turn by 25%. Not a huge deal. Actually, that is pretty impactful, but that's not what gets annoying so much in the campaign. The thing that's annoying in the campaign is when he procs this ability, one shots your champions and blocks revive, which is so, so annoying, which is why 12-7 is probably the most requested campaign stage people want help with. I see it very often on stream. People are like, hey, can you jump in? Help me do the campaign. I'm like, okay, what stage are you doing? Chapter a Nightmare, chapter 12, stage seven. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> you got to have very specific champions to do this, to be honest, or it's just kind of a headache. Paragon can do it. I believe there's some other champions you can kind of cheese it with, but either way, let's get back to the subject of this video. Building two of them, you can definitely do two of them with like Siffy, Double Mortu, and then I think Vogoth is who Fohawk was using when he attacked my team. But if you have three of them, do like Siffy, Triple Mortu or any other tank champions. Basically, you just want more. Oh, no, he was doing a Fohawk was doing, I think, Necrit, Siffy, and Double Mortu. So he was just keeping them alive, letting them take the hits. And then once they got a turn, boom, they're basically killing everybody. No problem whatsoever. This this hits two times and it goes through most champions. I mean, reaction gear, weak hits may stop the champion from dying. But this is definitely a champion who I haven't booked. I don't think he requires a ton. Pretty easy to build, pretty easy masteries. Fits in a lot of different gear sets pretty easily. You just need to stack crit damage on him. Um, you don't need savage gear because he ignores basically everything anyways. Shields, block damage, and defense. So just stack him with some crit damage, throw two of them in a team, jump in the arena, and you're going to have quite a bit of fun. So this is definitely a champion who I would build two of them if I had a second of him, which is kind of weird because a lot of people look at this champion, or at least for a while, looked at this champion as kind of like a... a a D tier champion, like a not very good champion whatsoever. But for arena uses, he's definitely got a pretty solid use there. And honestly, even in some Doom Tower runs, I've used him just to proc his peril ability to get through some annoying waves. And just depends on what the Doom Tower run is as well, right? Now, the next champion, which I believe is um, eighth, seventh champion or eighth champion, I don't know. I don't know how to count. It doesn't really matter though, but Valkyrie. So Valkyrie is a champion also that unfortunately I don't have. I wish I had her. I wish I had a single copy of her. I wish I had a duplicate copy of her, though granted for me, I probably wouldn't build two of them. But the reason why I'm saying she's worth building duplicates of is because a lot of people get this champion and throw her in the clan boss. The clan boss build versus the arena build are very different builds. One of them, you're going to want to go high defense. I assume um, HP, she's going to be speed tuned. That's going to be the clan boss build. For the arena build, you're going to want her to be very high accuracy or high enough accuracy to manip nim manipulate Anemone sound like sound like Nemo over here trying to say anemone anim manipulate the turn meter. All right, let's try let's try not to make any comparisons to Disney movies, but to manipulate the target's turn meter, you can either you run her with accuracy. Now you don't have to run her with a ton of accuracy because you don't necessarily want to reduce everybody's turn meter as long as you reduce at least like the speed boosters, maybe the DPS. You want some champions to still go. You just want to mess up their turn order basically. So you're gonna build her with accuracy. The speed levels are going to be different. The HP and defense are going to be different. So the clan boss build may be able to work in defense, depending or like arena defense, depending on how your champions are built. But having two of them allows you to specialize one for the arena and then specialize one for the clan boss as well. Very much so a champion who, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have duplicates of, definitely worth a champion worth building duplicates of, assuming you're going to use her in clan boss. If you don't plan on using her in clan boss, if you already have a different team, maybe an unkillable team, where you don't need Valkyrie, then just build one of them for Arena and she's going to do amazing, okay? Super, super annoying champion in the Arena to go against a very solid champion to especially attack like speed teams with Siffies on them. A very good champion to even the speed playing field. And if I had one of them, I would basically instantly take her to level 60. Now, let's move on to the next champion. This champion, I know a lot of people don't have her, which I guess this is with all legendaries, right? But Duchess. Duchess is another champion who if I had two of them, I would 100% build two of them. So, Let's go here and um, see her from this area right here. So Duchess, if I you seen the one I just now had, she is a high resist build. If I had another one, I'd probably build her faster because she's very, very good in the Doom Tower. But a champion who, honestly, I'm not going to elaborate on this too much. If you have Duchess, if you have one copy of her, I think you can imagine how good she's going to be if you had another one, okay? So if you've played with Duchess for a little while, you'll know, okay, she's amazing in basically every area of the game. Most people don't use her in the clan boss, but I have seen people use her in Ultra Nightmare clan boss. But she's amazing everywhere in the game, okay? So you can definitely do multiple different builds for her without a problem, okay? And if I had two of them, I would without a doubt build two of them. Her skill kit is just too good to not invest in two of them. Now, if I had like four of them, 
then yeah, I probably wouldn't invest in four of them, but two of them for sure, three of them probably, four of them's kind of pushing the line, but past that, no. But definitely, if you have dupes of Duchess, you're definitely lucky, and yeah, you should probably build them. But the last champion, last but not least, is the champion that I've been wanting for so long, probably my most wanted champion in the game, and the reason why I'm saving all my Void Shards right now, that is Hegemon. Is he the best champion? No. Is Warlord probably better than Hegemon? Yes. But for what I want him for, no. I want him because he's a sick champion. Honestly, I'm going to pull all my shards for the 10x Hedgy. I want one of them. I want two of them. I'll take three or even four Hegemons. That's not a problem to me whatsoever. Honestly, I'll probably get annoyed by him once I have him for a few weeks. But he's such a fun champion, it seems like. Just by watching people play with him, I think he's going to be a fun champion. I've used him a few times on other people's account, and he definitely seems like an enjoyable champion. Just, I mean, always going first. Okay, I don't need to go over his skill kit too much. I'm not going to read it all but a very fun champion, it seems. So, obviously, you got the Nuke Hedgy build, and then you got an Accuracy Hedgy build. Both of them are for the arena, but with a Doom Tower, he's actually getting some more use. So, if I had him, I would definitely use him on Dark Fae, because once you get to the Dark Fae, if you have him speed tune with your team to actually use his A2 ability once he gets to Dark Fae, if you can even do that, I'm not for sure if you can have him set up to actually do that or not, since there's only two waves before the Dark Fae, and he may not get his ability fully off a of cooldown, his A3 that is, but his A1 does work pretty well as well. I think it targets the person with the highest turn meter. So definitely a champion who I would 100% be using or at least trying to use on the Dark Fae boss if I had him. So I'm hoping a 10x Hedgy comes up soon. If it does, I'm definitely going to pull him. If you have two Hedgies, I imagine you've already built both of them. But if you didn't, go ahead and go into your account. Go ahead and type in slash delete and go ahead and just remove your account, okay? But I'm just kidding. Go ahead and go in there and build a second Hegemon because you're really going to like it. I can almost guarantee it. If you don't like two Hedgies, your account is probably mind-blowingly next level anyways, but definitely another champion who I think building du duplicates of and maybe even triples, maybe even quadruples of would very much so be worth it. Now, heck, if I had 12 of them, I'd build all 12 of them. Throw them in 3v3. It'd be the best team in the world. I mean... Full team of hedgies, what are you really going to do, right? You're never going to get a turn. They're just going to destroy you. So that's the 10, 11 champions or so that I would definitely invest in. If I had duplicate copies of them, some of them I do have duplicates of. Some of them I have invested in the duplicates of. And some of them I don't have duplicates of. But if I did, I would definitely invest in. Now, there's other champions like Ray. Ray, I could justify building two of her. One Nuker, one Crowd Control. Definitely a good champion. A lot of these champions, you could do the same thing. Martyr, one for Dungeons maybe, one for Clan Boss, Ghostborn, one for Speedruns, one for Arena. There's a lot of these champions, like I mentioned, that you could justify building two of. A lot of these legendaries, especially but the ones I've listed off are ones that hopefully will bring you the most value that you won't regret investing two of. Uh, Shamel and Madam being the only two Void Epics, or only two Epics that I had on this list at all. But let me know what you guys think about that idea that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. Let me know what you think about these champions that went over. Maybe I missed a few legendaries that you guys have that you've built dupes of and you really like them. Definitely leave those down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.